Now that we know the parts of an equation or parts of a reaction, let's talk about balancing equations. And they love to ask this kind of question on the tax test. Here's a very simple reaction. Sodium is going to react with chlorine to produce salt. Now you'll notice I've left out the phases, solid and gas and solid, and that won't matter for what we're doing. Sometimes they put it in there, but I don't, didn't want it to be too cluttered. Now what we're going to do is we're going to balance the equation. Now here's what that means. I know the ingredients. It's like making a cake. If I want to make a cake, I know that in a cake I'm going to have eggs. I know that I'm going to have flour. I'm going to have sugar. I might even have a little bit of milk, maybe a little bit of oil, depends on what kind of cake. But can I just throw eggs and flour and sugar and milk and oil into a bowl and make a cake? No. I can't. I have to have a recipe. The recipe tells me how much of this, how much of this, how much of this, how much of this, and how much of this. I can't just put it all together and guess. That's exactly what happens here. We have to have the recipe. Right now, I know the ingredients and what I'm going to make. These are the ingredients. They're going to react. This is the product. This is going to be, the in the example, the cake that I'm making. The question is, how much of each do I need? That is what we're trying to figure out. Now how do we do that? Well this is what is called balancing equations. So I'm going to erase to make it less cluttered. Here's how you do it. All you have to do is be able to count. And if you can count, you can balance. Help me out. On the left hand side right here, how many NAs are there? I see one of them. NAs on this side, I see one of them. CLs on this side, I see two. The little two tells me there's two of them. And there's just one. Well, this is breaking a law right now. This is the law of conservation of mass. It looks like I've, I've lost something. Uh, it looks like I just lost a two. I can fix it by doing that. Well, that's not correct. Here's why. If I look back at my chart, NA has a plus one charge. CL minus one charge. Plus one, minus one. They equal zero. So the formula is NaCl. I can't have a little two in there. That would make it wrong. So right now I have a problem. These are what we call balanced. I have the same number on both sides. That's right. The chlorines are messed up. So I have to fix it. Here's how I fix it. To fix it, I can't put a two here. I put a two in front. When I put a 2 in front, it's the distributive property in math class. Let me remind you. If you were in math class and you were trying to solve this, you know from math class that this is 2x and this is 2. The 2 goes with each. It's called the distributive property. It's exactly the same thing up here. I have two chlorines. I just fixed it. Uh-oh. But I just messed somebody up. By putting a 2 here, I now made that a 2. Is that a major problem? No, it's not. I can fix that by putting a 2 over here, and now I'm done. Notice I have 2 NAs here and 2 NAs here. That's balanced. Very good. Then I have 2 CLs here and 2 CLs here. This is what is called balanced. That's what we're trying to do. Here's the recipe. It takes two of these with one of these to make two of those. Now that may sound confusing. Let me explain. We don't write ones. It's understood there's a one right there. Any other number I have to write it in. So the blank space right there means it's a one. Two of these with one of these makes two of these. It's like saying two eggs and one cup of sugar is what I need for my recipe. Two of these and one of these makes two of those. Let's do another one. Let's try this reaction. H2 plus O2 makes H2O. Well, let's begin counting. Each element you're going to have to count. Let's count how many H's there are and how many O's there are. H's, two on this side. H's, two on that side. That's balance. Oxygen's, two on this side, one on this side. Okay, 
That means we've got to fix the oxygens. How do we do that? Well, I have to put a two out front. That fixes my oxygens distributive property. So there's two O's and two O's. But when I put that two there, it counts to the H also. That became a four. Two times two is four. How do I fix that problem? Well, I fix it by putting a two over here because two times two over there is a four. Let's check our work. Two times two is four H's. Two times two is four H's. That's balanced. Two oxygens. Two oxygens. Balanced. It's balanced. Let's try another one. Here's another reaction. Let's see how we do. Li, P, and you always want to count so that you don't guess. Lithiums, Li, I see three of them and one of them. I see one phosphorus and one phosphorus. First, let me give you another word real quick. Before I do anything to it, this is what is called a skeleton equation. It's a skeleton. It doesn't have all the parts, but I know what's going on. Okay, so sometimes they use the word skeleton equation. Now, what we want to do is take that skeleton equation, we want to balance it. Okay, so how do we do that? Let's check our numbers. Fix that real quick. Let's see. Phosphorus look like they're okay. Lithium, three and one. Well, I fixed that with a three. That fixes that. Does the three count for the P? No because there's a plus sign that separates them. That plus sign makes sure that it keeps them separated. So the three only goes with that. Well, it looks like we did it. Three LIs, three LIs. They look a little different. The three's on the bottom there, but it's a big one here. It doesn't matter. Three and three. That's right. One phosphorus and one phosphorus. There you go. Sometimes they don't take much work at all. Let's try one more, and then I'm going to let you try a couple on your own in the next exercise. What happens if you have something like this? Mg plus N2 produces Mg3 N2. Let's count Mg's and N's. 1 Mg, 3 Mg. Two ends. Two ends. Well, to fix the MGs, I have to put a three there. The three doesn't count for him. Well, it looks like I'm fixed. Three MGs, three MGs, two ends, and two ends. Yeah, I got them. One more. One more, just to make sure we have it. Um, let's try something like ALs and O's. Give you a second to write this one down. Let's count uh, one AL here, two ALs there. That one's messed up. Gonna have to fix that. Two O's and three O's. All right, this is a new problem. Everything's messed up. All right, just pick one and see what happens. Let's start with the O's. Um, I have three there and two there. How do I get those to equal? Well, I know that they both go into six. To get a six, that means I would have to multiply by a two here. That would give me six of those. To get this to 6, I would have to be 3 times 2, which is 6. Let me do that one more time. 3 and 2 don't easily go into each other, but they do go into 6. 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6. Now, when I did that, I really messed up somebody else. By putting a 2 here, that gave me a 4. And AL, how do I fix that? Well, if that's a 4, that has to be a 4. Well, let's see if we got it right. Looks like we got it. Four ALs, four ALs, two times two. That's right. 
six O's, two times three, six O's. We got it. Sometimes there's a number in every single place. Now, these are simple. Notice I had an element and an element made a group. What do you do if it's something that looks a little bit more difficult? We'll try one of these. It's exactly the same thing. Let's say that I had Na F plus Ba3 in 2. And it makes Na3 in plus B A F 2. Well, this one looks a lot more complex. Well, that's okay. It's really the same thing. We're going to count each thing separately. N A's. We're going to count F's. We're going to count B A's. And we're going to count N's. Notice, I picked them off this side, but they're the same things over here. Follow along carefully as I go along. N A 1. N A three over there. F one F two B A three B A one N two N one. They're all messed up. And so how do I know what to do? Well, I just pick something and start fixing it. Every time I fix something, whoever I mess up, I'm then gonna fix. I'm just gonna pick B A. It doesn't matter. I just chose BA. BA, I need a 3 right here to make that work out. As soon as I did that, I messed up this guy because 3 times 2 is 6. Hint, hint, hint. Fix who you just messed up. 6 F's. To get 6 F's, I need to put a 6 there. And I just messed up NA with 6. So let's fix him. What times 3 gives me 6? Well, that's a 2. And I just messed up the ends. No, I didn't. I just fixed it all. 6 and 6. So I have 6 NAs and 6 NAs. 6 Fs. 6 Fs. 3 BAs. Always check your work. 3 BA. 2 N and 2 N. Check, check 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 how do they ask these on the test well they'll do something like this after you've balanced it you look for the answer that says six one two three how did i get that well after you've balanced it your answers are six one two and three so you would find the answer that has that and that's the one you bought this is how you balance equations in the next section You'll get to do a few on your own.